Hi, this is Yevhen Matyshenko with Ukraine Forum, and we're in the heart of Ukraine. Every week, we'll be offering you insights into what's really happening in Ukraine so that you guys don't get lost in confusion over what you see or hear about our country from different sources. Important, don't really bother to opt for Russian media. Just don't. We're set to bring you the latest from Ukraine as the world keeps in the focus the nation that so far remains in Russia's crosshairs. Not the best context to have the country on top international agenda, but oh well. So, President Volodymyr Zelensky this week signed off a decree to increase the number of Ukrainian army troops by 100,000, seeking to modernize the military, adopting the force to be able to properly address modern-day challenges. One of the main prospects on the horizon no more conscription. As early as 2024, the nation will have a fully professional army, only contracted servicemen, all fit and combat ready. As we all know, if you want peace, get ready for war. And that's exactly what Ukrainians are doing, as we all seek peace. Meanwhile, Ukrainian civilian women are taking an active part in various training sessions to get prepared for possible Russian aggression. And we all know how talented our women are. But let's not forget about the most important thing. Ukraine is not planning any offensive operations, neither in Donbass, nor in Crimea, nor on the border with Russia. Moscow, however, keeps claiming just the opposite. Which way is Russia, by the way? That way? Come on, Mr. Putin. That was not a hostile offensive step. Loads of news this week involving Ukraine in international politics. How about I visit Kyiv? That was the first morning thought of at least three prime ministers of Britain, Poland and the Netherlands. Really? Why not? The first to arrive in Ukraine was head of Poland's government Mateusz Morawiecki, who announced his cabinet's decision to send Ukraine defensive weapons. Solidarity and words are not enough today. Now we have to force them into action. The head of the Polish government said, vowing supplies of ammunition, manpads, and drones of various types. Dziękujemy, pan Morawiecki. A little later came our good friend Boris Johnson. His visit comes amid Britain's apparent vision of Ukraine as a partner in realizing their geopolitical interests. For the sake of his Kiev visit, Johnson even postponed his Tokyo trip. Sorry, Japan, nothing personal. On a serious note, though, this top-level meeting was an unprecedented event for the start of a political year. Ahead of Johnson's visit, the British government approved financial assistance to Ukraine worth 88 million pounds, aimed to support sustainable governance and energy independence from Russia. During joint presser in Kyiv, following talks with Boris Johnson, Volodymyr Zelensky announced almost 2 billion pounds from the UK for joint projects with Ukraine. Also. The British Prime Minister told reporters of the UK's resolute stance to introduce sanctions the minute a first Russian tow cap crosses into a sovereign territory of Ukraine. Unfortunately for Boris Johnson, even in Kyiv he could not escape some inconvenient questions, of course from British journalists, about some domestic political issues. But we all know Boris is a tough guy, he won't be caught off his guard by some flashbacks of those lockdown parties, right? After all, it's about Britain's resolve to be ready to address the enemy that in certain respects is much more dangerous even than a global pandemic. It is no accident that Johnson and Morawiecki arrived in Kyiv almost simultaneously. The thing is, Ukraine, Britain and Poland have agreed on the concept of a new trilateral military and political alliance. Moreover, the project could be seen as attractive by Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia to consider joining it in a bid to strengthen own security. Well, perhaps that's not really what Mr. Putin was expecting when he went for ramping up tensions. Meanwhile, Ankara also keeps Kyiv in its focus. In Ukraine-Turkey relations, a certain breakthrough was observed this week as the two governments have signed a free trade agreement. The move is yet another confirmation of Turkey's support for Ukraine against the background of a difficult situation related to Russia's ongoing hybrid aggression. Did the Kremlin have some issues with Turkey's tomato exports? Come on, Turkey, you know where to root your exports, just in case. Oh, by the way, thanks for those little birdies.
just awesome. As per reports by Ukraine security officials, the situation around Ukraine's borders and in the temporarily occupied areas in general remains under control. The Ukrainian side is monitoring and working to address any attempts by the Russian hybrid forces to stage an active provocation that could further be used as a casus belly to justify further invasion. Next week promises to be just as busy in the domain of active diplomacy. Kyiv is getting ready to welcome five foreign ministers from Germany, France, the Czech Republic, Austria and Slovakia. These nations are all set for constructive cooperation with Ukraine on a wide range of issues, including security. Ukraine remains really grateful to all its partners for their respective assistance. Field military hospitals are great. Military helmets, awesome. It would be so nice, however, to receive for Valentine's Day some nice batch of stingers, anti-tank missiles or some other lovely gifts of this kind. We'll be closely following the developments and get back to you next Friday to deliver a fresh update. This is Ukraine Forum in the heart of Ukraine.